Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we have yet another relative compression test video. It is an analysis video as opposed to a setup video. I do have a real-time setup video that I will post a link in the description for if you'd like to see it. All you have to do is exclude the pressure pulse portion of it and follow every other step that is in that video. And you'll be ready to do the same exact test that we're going to do here. I figured I'd do this video to include all the information that one can get off of this one test instead of sporadically injecting this information throughout all my videos um, um, there are many relative compression test video but i haven't seen one put all this into one uh video so that's why i'm doing it uh, i figured why not share everything it has to offer so <clears throat> vehicle in question is a 2013 nissan pathfinder with a 3.5 liter and it is a post repair capture it is a after changing out the battery the previous battery was dead this is a brand new battery and i basically wanted to capture a uh, just a general health check uh, post repair um, <clears throat> and also keeping in mind that i wanted to make this video i've been meaning to do this video but it's it's i finally have a chance again because this is a revised version a friend of mine reached out to me and told me a couple things i missed and i appreciate that so i wanted to make a video in which i can give correct information and not mislead anyone last thing i want to do is confuse anybody and uh misinform them as well so to start off we're going to go ahead and take a look at our first scope this is an overview showing our key on start to crank our loaded current as it's cranking and then finally the engine is running and it is then um <clears throat> the throttle is then taken off the uh, reason why I say that is because some, not all, cars include a clear flood mode in which you will hold down the throttle all the way down. PCM recognizes that and enters clear flood mode, which cuts off injector pulse and allows for cranking compression strokes only. It will not run. Once, you, once I let go of that throttle, the engine was uh, given injector pulse, fed fuel, and it was allowed to run. Uh, to start with our first capture is our in rush uh, a lot of people may say something about this but my, the range of my clamp is up to 600 amps i know i need to upgrade to the 2000 amp range but at the moment this is all i have i wish i could have that in rush uh, peak but i do not but what this is telling me is that battery uh, source amperage is good uh, the battery is more than capable of providing the current necessary to start this vehicle and then some the battery in question is the specs are co-cranking amps 600 amps and cranking amps 750 amps um, this goes way beyond you could tell by the separation here this goes way beyond uh, 600 i believe 700 amps as i said i do regret not having that that bit of information for you but uh, please bear with me on that one this basically vindicates any wiring uh from the battery to the starter and back so voltage drop is not an issue if voltage drop was an issue we would not see such a steep inrush we would see kind of a slope into a loaded current situation uh, our loaded current is where we're going to go next and it is you could say one of the most generous uh sections of the relative compression test as we jump into our our loaded current we could take a look at our compression peaks and unless you have a known good you won't know or at least most people won't know what a known what a good loaded current should be this looks like it's about 185 amps rms give or take unless you have a known good you won't know so you can use a known good to, to um, check for low compression if all of the cylinders had low compression you would not be able to tell you can only tell when something is sticking out like a short thumb if one cylinder was dead or had a, a bent valve or what have you a uh, broken spring you would be able to tell uh, by a missing hump a missing uh, compression peak if you had a cylinder that did not have an exhaust valve opening you would have double the compression on one I'll, or almost double the compression on one of these humps on the companion cylinder um, due to two compressions 
uh, compression events at one shot so that starter amperage will spike up and stick out like a short thumb as opposed to a dead cylinder with a low hump and to that's not the only thing that you can see you can, this doesn't only prove engine mechanical and sealing uh, integrity you can also zoom in and take a look at the starter armature as that starter is spinning and pushing that crank that crankshaft we can see these segments of the armature now there are some spikes here but this spike is no more than 10 amps that doesn't worry me if i saw something above 20 30 40 amps that would that would worry me and if we saw that the winding was good um i'm sorry if we saw a giant cutoff of current that would lead towards a dead spot in the starter armature if we saw a sudden rise in current that would probably lead to a uh resistance specs a lower than normal or shorted um, segment <coughs> and you would also see a resemblance a, a uniformity to it as well um, <coughs> one of the other things that we can look at is engine rpms if we put our ruler on a top dead center uh, event and we count six we can go ahead and take a look at engine rpms it says 160 rpms more or less uh, is that our correct RPMs? No. Uh, crankshaft rotation occurs, uh, top dead center occurs twice for every um, top dead center of one cylinder. So every 720 degrees of crankshaft rotation, that piston is coming up twice. So you multiply that RPM times two, and that is your true RPM. So our RPMs is 320 uh, RPMs for this vehicle. It's a bit high, but uh, this thing was this thing was um, it had a brand new battery but this starting event was pretty fast another thing that we could take a look at i did not capture a spark event i did not sync this um this rc test to a coil but if we were to pretend this ruler was a uh, firing line we could take a look whether it is <clears throat> before or after top that center obviously in time we are reading from left to right so anything before top dead center would occur to the left of that peak uh, some cars will crank at zero degrees spark events some will have spark events but anything on or before top dead center you should be fine it doesn't rule out timing though if specs is on or before top dead center spark event you're good to go but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's in time now anything on to the right of that compression peak you definitely have an issue going on with either timing or timing signals it could be a shifted crank reluctor or tone wheel it could be something uh, timing that that is actually off but anything after that top dead center uh peak you're looking at some uh timing or timing signal issues and finally moving on to our last scope here this is where i finally let off the throttle we are no longer doing cranking compression and the current flow starts uh, dim uh diminishing and then finally it changes um <clears throat> it changes polarity where the engine is starting to spin and that current is changing polarity going to zero and then coming out to the negative and why would that be well the job of the battery is to do cranking it's, it also acts as a buffer but the main job of the battery is to do cranking it takes uh as you can see about 180 200 amps to crank this vehicle uh that that alternator is not doing that the alternator is hardly spinning <clears throat> so the the job of the battery is to crank but once that engine is running, the alternator takes over and powers everything in the vehicle. The battery is no longer doing any powering. So the current flow goes from out of the battery into the starter to from the alternator into the battery. So the change in current flow is a charging event. Uh, the starter, the alternator takes over. And as you can see, our RMS is about 45 um, <clears throat> amps. I've measured this previously and it is a smack dab in the middle 45 amps and just for the heck of it i pulled up 
my specs and at 1500 rpms we are required to have at least 31 amps i did not rev it i could have revved it and checked for 144 amps at 5000 rpms but i did not bother doing that but basically in one waveform we could see a lot of things we could see the inrush vindicating our wiring and our battery we could see our loaded current checking our starter armature our engine mechanical integrity our ceiling integrity our rpms we could check cranking rpms we could check a uh, spark event in relation to top dead center uh, to see if timing is an issue we can also see how much the alternator is charging um, make sure it's doing its job all in one test um, <clears throat> I hope this was beneficial to you I hope this um, this is something that you won't forget as you go along and, and start digging in and using your scope more often I appreciate each and every single one of you for taking the time to watch this video and leave a comment hit like share subscribe let me know what you think and till next time